Hello everyone, Brian here with Walnut Farm Bees. I uh, have a flannel shirt on today. Kind of uh, rainy outside in the 60s. And if anything, it gives us uh, a clue of what's coming in the near future. We've got uh, the autumn weather and eventually uh, nothing growing outside as far as what bees can forage and certainly colder weather coming beyond that and the winter for the bees to get through. And so uh, if you've seen my previous video, you should have already been doing something to test for your Varroa mites and start addressing and treating Varroa mites. While I'm monitoring the mite load all summer, uh, by the time I get to fall and certainly getting into September, I really want to start making sure that these levels are going back towards zero, um, not just uh, the five or six uh, mite, mites in the mite count, because this, the colony size is going to shrink and the impact of the mites on those bees is going to increase. And, and these bees are raising, uh, are going to be the ones that raise the winter bees that need to get through the winter to spring. So I want them to be healthy and free of all of the uh, diseases that the mites are carrying. So this time of year, um, we've assessed and addressed queen issues, uh, mite issues. Uh, we'll go back around and do mite cleanup with something like oxalic acid. Uh, this time of year, you you can the temperatures are cooling off, so you can use something like formic acid. You can use thymol, a uh, product like Apigard, uh, but you want to be cautious pushing that really much later than now, because both of those products, while they work well, they do shut the queen down from laying for a period of time, and you really don't want uh, a queen not laying as you go into fall. You want to do your best to uh, keep a strong colony size so that you have uh, a large size really going into November, uh, and especially here in South Central Pennsylvania. A lot of this stuff happens to be uh, local. So some of what I say, you got to make sure it matches the weather and what's going on in your area. There's still some natural pollen, some natural nectars and goldenrod in various areas. So uh, what I'm saying needs to match your area. But uh, increasingly, those sources are uh, either slowing down or will get to the point where they slow down. And I wanna make sure that my bees are stimulated so that the queen continues to lay and the colony size uh, still stays up there in size. And I want to make sure, that as far as the pollen is concerned, that they have the right nutrition uh, and the fats and uh, pollen protein that they need to uh, be healthy as they go into fall. And so I have a few things here today. I've got a box here of 10 global pollen patties. And you can see a piece, about a quarter of a piece I took off one. And these are my favorite. Uh, there's a lot of good uh, pollen substitute out there. These are my favorite. They have uh, real pollen in them. And when I put them side by side, the bees always seem to really like them and consume them well. Um, right now, I'm starting to put maybe a quarter patty on most of my colonies uh, almost every week or at least every 10 days to, again, keep things healthy, make sure they have what they need and to continue to stimulate that queen to continue to lay. I still want my the size of my colony to be strong going into fall. Unless a colony is packed out with resources as far as uh, honey, uh, nectar is concerned, I'm also stimulating right now with, this is one-to-one -one sugar syrup and it stimulates, uh, sim simulates uh, nectar, and so it's causing uh, the bees to be fed. Uh, if they have enough, they'll start to uh, cure it, store it away, and definitely keeps the queen laying. Uh, this 
and if you have any draw comb that needs to be drawn out yet, which I have some new comb I put on that I want to be drawn for next spring, uh, this is the ticket right here. The heavier syrups aren't usually going to cause them to draw out that comb. So this is what's going on colonies that need fed right now. Um, as we get into the end of the month, late September, early October, I'll go with a really heavy syrup like this one. Uh, this is this is Pro Sweet from uh, Man Lake, but or you can make your own two to one uh, heavy syrup, and that requires less curing on the on the part of the bees, and so they're easily able to stock away some weight. Uh, this heavier syrup here, I uh, wouldn't be using as much for stimulating a colony, but putting weight on a colony that's significantly underweight, which can, can happen by the time you get to the end of September. Uh, we might find that some of the larger colonies, if there's not a lot to eat, may start to eat through some of their resources. So we want to still make the, make sure that those same colonies have enough food on, in my mind, around here, particularly before I get into November. Uh, so if any heavy feed that goes on is going to go on late September uh, through into October, depending upon the weather, maybe into the end of October, and to make sure that those colonies have adequate weight, uh, that they'll have enough resources to get them through the winter. And as I mentioned, uh, as far as your rural mites are concerned, um, you should be addressing them already, but if not, um, a if not, uh, for some colonies it may be too late, but if your counts are low and you haven't had to treat yet, uh, you still might want to consider this fall bringing the counts down as low as possible. And one of the things that we like to do is uh, in the fall and typically late November after Thanksgiving, late December after Christmas, around the time of the winter solstice, we'll use some, some form of oxalic acid. If you don't have an oxalic acid vaporizer, uh, you can see this syringe here, you use something like this and you can mix up a solution uh, to do an oxalic acid dribble, which is an inexpensive way to uh, treat your colony with oxalic acid. We have information on our website and a link there that will take you to directions for mixing this up. Um, Better Bee has some good directions on this. Uh, you can see I've got a ProVap vaporizer. This is what we'll use. Um, to go, go around and uh, hit all of the colonies the end of November once and the end of December once to do a cleanup round for any mites that are remaining or in the case of colonies that might have robbed out weak or untreated colonies, uh, they all, those colonies will see a surge in mites and this uh, will usually address it. The other thing that that happens when we treat at the end of December is the majority of the time this is going to keep result in colonies that are clean going into spring so that we usually won't have to treat in the spring and not really have to think about it until we get towards midsummer. So I know we're going to have some uh, I'm sure some 80s temperatures and some warm and muggy days yet uh, that kind of make us think that uh, you know it's still summer it's still warm uh, but we're past the summer solstice the daylight certainly days are getting shorter and we can tell that of course and, and the bees know that and so uh, really the cow town has begun to making sure you know, we're well underway as far as the countdown to making sure that these colonies get through the winter so think about your colonies as far as making sure they have plenty of feed right now. You're addressing the Varroa mites. Your queens are laying uh, and they have uh, pollen available to them. And then think about uh, possibly doing some kind of a late fall, winter mite treatment to uh, clean up any remaining mites so that your colonies get through the winter. We'll follow up here uh, late fall, uh, showing you what we do as we uh, kind of settle them down for the winter. And uh, we, we already have some mouse guards on. We Sometimes they're left on all the time. The mouse guards on already, even though it's not mandatory that you must have them on right now. Um, it's just personal preference. 
when we get into December, by the time we're into December, uh, we'll put a thin piece of insulation on top of every colony. And let me grab one of those. Just using, it's not heavy insulation. It's just this Reflectix that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. Almost looks like a foil back bubble wrap. But we put this underneath the, the lid on every colony. So it's at the top of the hive. Uh, this helps, this, this seems to help with uh, condensation, things like that. I'm not 100% necessary, just our preference uh, as we get them ready for winter. Uh, the other thing that we do, and we'll show you late in the fall, We have some that are different sizes, but we, we put on a put a shim on it every every colony, uh, and this allows us to, if we've got to put any October pollen patties, of course they'll fit in there a little bit better. But mostly it's here so that late December, if we want to put any uh, winter patties on, just as extra insurance, uh, it's easy to do that that late in the year the bees aren't going to draw any wonky comb up on top here. So we can easily put these shims on uh, just beneath uh, the lid of the hive. And most of the colonies, we will put a winter patty up on top when we get to, towards the end of December, uh, just as insurance. They'll eat it up as you go into spring, but it definitely helps with the changing weather pattern that we've had uh, the last number of years where uh, you know we'll get some really warm days all of a sudden and bees will get stuck in one location or the other um, but they don't seem to forget where those winter patties are and if they're up at the top and there's food on the bottom uh, it, se it seems to help as far as that goes again not 100 percent necessary but fairly inexpensive insurance as far as that goes uh, so um, happy september and we'll follow up uh, later on in the fall and make sure that you're addressing the things that your colonies need as they head into fall and we're really uh, making sure that they get through the winter.